In today's lesson, we'll be multiplying decimals by another decimal. To learn this, we're going to start with the example 5 and 68 hundredths times 2 and 5 tenths. Since we already know how to multiply fractions, let's turn both numbers into fractions and solve. 5 and 68 hundredths is a mixed number. Written as a mixed number, it would be written as 5 and 68 hundredths. But we know that to multiply fractions, we're going to turn that mixed number into an improper fraction. So if I were to write 5 and 68 hundredths as an improper fraction, I would have a 100 in my denominator, and I'd have 568 in my numerator. I'm going to write 2 and 5 tenths as an improper fraction as well. 2 and 5 tenths goes to the tenths place. So if I read this to the tenths place, it would be read 25 tenths. So I have a 10 in my denominator and a 25 in my numerator. Now I'm going to solve. I'm not going to cross cancel because I want you to see why I'm placing the decimal point in the spot that I choose to place it at the very end of this problem. So we're not going to simplify, we're just going to solve by multiplying my numerators and multiplying my denominators. As you can see down below, I've set up 568 times 25. Those are the two factors if I multiply my numerators. And I'm going to solve. 8 times 5 is 40. I'll put the 0 down, carry the 4. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. I'm going to put the 4 down and carry the 3. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 3 is 28. When I go down to my next line, I'm going to be multiplying two tens times 568. So I'm going to cross out the 3 and the 4 because I've already added them into my product. I'm going to put a placeholder, and then I'm going to multiply 2 times 8, which is 16. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. I'll carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. And we know that we now need to add those two numbers together. When I add them together, I end up getting 14200, which is 14,200. I'm going to write that in the place of my numerator. Now I'm going to multiply the denominators. 100 times 10 is 1,000. Now I can write this as a decimal. Since I have a multiple of 10, such as 1,000 in the denominator, I can write this as a decimal. This is 14,200 thousandths. So I'm going to write 14,200, and it's thousandths. So I'm going to add the decimal point in between the 4 and the 2, so my number goes to the thousandths place. But I have two zeros at the very end, which don't hold any value. So now that I've added my decimal point, I can take those off, because they don't hold any value. And now I can read the problem as 14 and 2 tenths. And I can box that, because that's my final answer. Let's take a look at this another way. 14,200 over 1,000 can be written as division, right? Because the fraction line literally means divided by. I could set it up like this, 14,200 divided by 1,000. We know how to divide by 1,000. We're going to move the decimal point over to the left three spaces to make the number 1,000 times smaller. When I move my decimal place, the answer looks like this because I move my decimal place three places to the left. Again, the zeros don't hold any value, so I can just get rid of them. And I end up with 14 and 2 tenths. So you can see, taking a look at these decimals in fraction form, why our answer comes out to 14 and 2 tenths. I'm going to move this information off to the side so that I can make some room on the right-hand side to solve the problem out vertically. I'm going to set 5 and 68 hundredths times 2 and 5 tenths up vertically and solve it outright. So I'm going to solve it procedurally, step by step, without changing it into fractions. I'm going to set up the 5 and 68 hundredths on top because it has more digits. And I'm going to solve. When I start solving this problem, I'm going to ignore the decimal places. I'm going to ignore the decimal points and solve the problem as though they were whole numbers. We'll worry about the decimal points later. In multiplication, you don't align the decimal points. You just set the problem up like you see here. I'm going to multiply. Now this should look really familiar because we just solved this problem when we did fractions. 
because we had to multiply 568 times 25. Those are the two numbers in my numerator. Now when I solve them here, remember I'm ignoring the decimal place to start. So it ends up being the same work that we just showed. I'm now going to add these numbers together and of course I get 14,200. But remember, there will be a decimal place. I just wasn't putting it in yet. I put that in at the end. So now I'm going to take a look at my two factors. I'm going to take a look at how many decimal places are in each factor, and then I will add the total number of decimal places into my answer. So in 5 and 68 hundredths, there are two decimal places. In 2 and 5 tenths, there's one decimal place. All together, there are three decimal places. So that means that I'm going to have three decimal places in my answer. So I'm going to count three decimal places from the left and place my decimal point in. Again, the answer is 14 and 2 tenths because those two zeros at the end end up not holding any value. So when I'm ready to box my answer, I can get rid of those. I'll box my answer and you can see that we got the same answer that we did when we solved it with fractions. So the procedure of multiplying a decimal times a decimal is to ignore the decimal place when you start, and then after you do the multiplication, you will count the decimal places in each factor, add them together, and place them in your product. Again, if you look at the work to the left, you can see why it is that we're placing the decimal point between the 4 and the 2. We're going to practice multiplying decimals by another decimal by taking a problem like 37 and 7 tenths times 2 and 8 tenths and setting it up vertically. So let's go through all the steps. We're going to practice this one and one more, and then you'll be able to practice a few on your own to try it out. I do want you to copy this problem and the next one into your notebook as I go over them. So make sure that you have your notebook out now. Pause the video if you need to take it out and get set up. How do we set this problem up for multiplication? Well, I'm going to start by putting 37 and 7 tenths up top and 2 and 8 tenths underneath it. I'm not putting 37 and 7 tenths up top because it is listed first. I'm actually putting it up top because it has a total of 1, 2, 3 non-zero digits, and 2 and 8 tenths has 1, 2 digits. Remember, in multiplication, if I were to have a number like 6 times 3, that equals 18. 3 times 6 equals 18, 2. So in multiplication, it doesn't matter what factor comes first, when we multiply them, we're going to get the same answer. But when we set a problem up vertically, it's a lot easier when we put the one with more digits up top. One way to think about this is if you were to ignore the decimal places and you were just multiplying whole numbers, so pretend that this was 377 and this was 28, which one would you set up on the top? Well, you've gotten used to setting the larger number up top, so you set three 177 on the top. It's going to work the same way with decimals, where you're going to put the number with more digits up top. Again, this is a nice trick to just look at it without the decimals. Sometimes it helps you figure out what one to put up top. Now that I have, have it set up, now that I have it set up, I'm going to solve the problem ignoring the decimal point. So I'm solving as though they were whole numbers. 7 times 8 is 56, carry the 5. 7 times 8 is 56 again. Add the 5 in is 61, I carry the 6. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 6 is 30. Again, make sure that you're copying this down with me. I'm going to cross the 6 and the 5 out because I've already added them into the product. Now I'm going to put a placeholder because I'm moving on to the 2 here. 2 times 7 is 14, carry the 1. 2 times 7 is 14 again, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1, and 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Now I'm going to add these two numbers together. Again, I'm just solving as though they were whole numbers. I'm ignoring the decimal point for now. We know that that decimal point is important, so we're going to come back to it at the end. I'm going to add these numbers together, and I get... 10,556, but I'm not going to add in the comma in between the 0 and the 5 because I know that that can't possibly be a reasonable answer. 
because I wasn't multiplying 377 times 28. I was multiplying 377 tenths times 28 tenths. So now I'm going to have to account for the decimal place. How do we place the decimal point in the product? Well, I'm going to have to take a look at the number of decimal places in each factor. In 37 and 7 tenths, I have one decimal place. In 2 and 8 tenths, I have one decimal place. To figure out where to place the decimal point in the answer, I'm going to place the decimal point in the product by starting on the right, meaning I'm talking about the product now, so my decimal point we know is technically at the end of the number if I were reading it as a whole number. So I'm going to start at the right, and I'm going to move the decimal point, the number of places, equal to the sum of decimal places in both the numbers. Whee, that was a bit of a tongue twister. Let's break that down a little bit. Again, they're telling me to move the decimal point, the number of places equal to the sum, which means addition, of decimal places in both numbers. The numbers I'm referring to here are the factors. So I'm going to look at 37 and 7 tenths, which we already did, and I know that there's one decimal place. 2 and 8 tenths, there's one decimal place. I need to find the sum of these numbers, which is 2. That's going to tell me the total number of decimal places in my answer. So my decimal place is going to move over two places to the left, and I will place the decimal in between the 5 and the 5. I'm going to now rewrite the problem and box it. My answer is 105 and 56 hundredths. Let's take a closer look at this problem. I'm going to show it in fraction form now so that you can really understand why the decimal is going in between the two fives. If I were to write 37 and 7 tenths as an improper fraction, it would be 377 tenths. Right? That's the tenths place. So I have 377 tenths. If I were to write 2 and 8 tenths as a fraction, it would be 28 tenths. Now I'm going to solve. I'm not going to do any simplifying so that this will be really clear and make a lot of sense. I'm just going to multiply my numerators and my denominators. But we know 10 times 10 is 100. 377 times 28 is 10,556. How did I know that so fast? Well, remember, when we solved this section, we first solved it by ignoring the decimal places. So the answer that we get without the decimal place in it is the answer to 377 times 28. So now if I take a look at this fraction, think about how I read that. 10,556 hundredths. I'm going to write that product down and read it one more time. Again, 10,556 hundredths. Well, if it's hundredths, my decimal is going to go right here, right? And notice I get the same exact answer because it's 10,556 hundredths. Another way to look at it, if I had 10,556 hundredths, and I wanted to turn it into a whole number. That means that I want a 1 in the denominator, right? To get from 100 to 1, I would have to divide by 100. Which, if I do that in my denominator, we know that I have to do that in my numerator. My arrow's in the way here. 10,556 divided by 100 means the decimal place moves over 2. And again, I end up with... 105 and 56 ones, which we know we could just simplify to 105 and 56 hundredths. Again, here we're really practicing the procedure. You don't have to show it in fractions, but I think seeing it with fractions makes a lot of sense because then you understand why the decimal point is being put in the place it's being put instead of just adding up the decimal places and putting it in the answer without knowing why. We're going to practice one more problem together. 11 and 8 tenths times 5 hundredths. How do we set this problem up for multiplication? Well, I'm going to start by putting 11 and 8 tenths up top, and I'm going to put 5 hundredths on the bottom. 
Why did I choose to put 11 and 8 tenths up top? Well, it's because there are three non-zero digits. Remember I told you a really good trick is to look at both of these numbers as though the decimal point wasn't there? Well, if I look at this without a decimal point, that's 118. I look at this one without a decimal point, that's just five, right? Because without a decimal point, do those hold any value? No, they don't at all. So I'm going to set 11 and 8 tenths up top. And I'm going to begin to multiply my digits, ignoring the decimal points. 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. And then 5 times the other 1 equals 5. Now stop here for just a second and take a look at the problem. Remember, if I were to look at this without any decimal points, it's just 5, right? Well, if I multiply 0 tenths times 11 and 8 tenths, the answer is going to be 0, right? 11 and 8 tenths times 0 equals 0. Any number times 0 always equals 0. Same thing when I multiply it times the one place. I'm going to get zero. So do we need to waste any time writing them down? No. It's just going to take a lot of time and it's not going to change the value of our answer. If you did write it down, you'd have a placeholder and then you'd end up with three zeros. And when you went to the zero in the ones place, you'd have two placeholders. And then you'd end up again with three zeros. Again, that's just a lot of work with not a big payoff, because it's not going to change the number at all. I'm going to add them together, and I'm still going to get 590. So if that's the case, you don't need to multiply the zeros. But the decimal point will be important, so you're going to want to make sure to pay attention to the decimal point in the end. I'm going to continue on. We just multiplied 11 and 8 tenths times 5 hundredths as though they were whole numbers. Now, how do we place the decimal point in the product? Once again, we're going to want to take a look at the total number of decimal places in the factors. So I'm going to take a look at 11 and 8 tenths, and I see that there is one decimal place in that number. I'm going to take a look at 5 hundredths, and you can see that there are two decimal places in that number. And our final step is the same. We will end up placing the decimal point in the product that's my product. In this case, I didn't have to add it together because I had two zeros to the left of the five. And we're going to know where to place it because we're going to move the decimal point, the number of places, equal to the sum, remember that means addition, equal to the sum of the decimal places in both numbers. Well, one and two equals three, which means that my answer is going to have three decimal places. Again, I know that my decimal is always going to start all the way to the right. And now I know I'm going to have three decimal places. So my decimal is going to move in front of the five. When I write this as my final answer, I'm not going to include the zero at the end. Because once again, does that hold any value? No. So when I write my final answer, it's going to look like this. And I'll box it. So the answer is 59 hundredths. Again, I didn't write the zero at the end because it doesn't hold any value. If you had it there, technically it isn't wrong, it's still correct, but it's just like taking the number 100 and choosing to write a zero to the left of the one. It doesn't hold any value, and it's just as confusing to write it like that. So we don't include it. We would just write the 100. Your turn. I want you to copy down and solve three problems on your own. Now before you copy them down and before I show them up on the screen, I want to remind you to really take your time making sure that you're multiplying correctly. If you make one multiplication error in this problem, let's say that you accidentally say that 3 times 7 is 28, it's going to throw the whole answer off. So it's really important that you don't rush through these problems, that you write neatly so you don't have copy errors, and that you take your time to calculate accurately. So with that in mind, complete the following three problems in your notebook. 